All right, I'm going to start up again then. Uh, we're on page 232. There's about 20 or so, page, 20 to 25 pages left in the chapter. We'll see where we get, okay? I'm going to give you at least a half an hour today. I'll go no longer than 11.15, promise, even if we don't finish. So they talk about more skills for working with arrays. And it says here how to use the array class. You may remember this if you look up on the screen here. We've done this before. But we go out to msdn.microsoft.com. And I know they've renamed it, but this will still get you. There's now docs.microsoft.com. But if you go out here and you do a search and you type in C Sharp Array Class, that'll show you everything that's available in the class. Now, some of the stuff we've talked about already. You know, they have examples on how to create arrays, so you, you know, but they'll also show you in there um, the sort, the reverse, etc. So if you're confused, if we went through that too fast, you have a look. All right. And they'll be in your book, too. So, But they mention some of the things that are in there. So if you look, we've already talked about length. Tomorrow we're going to use the binary search. I'll show you that. I didn't show you that one before. But if I want to search for something, I want you to see this, okay? If I want to search for something, first I need something to search for, right? But it has to be in order. All right, so I'm going to put it in ascending order. Now I want to go and I want to look and I want to see if 50 is in there. Look on the screen. Would you agree it's in there? All right. We start counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Would you agree with that? All right, so I'm going to search and I'm going to search for number 50. And it was found. Now, a couple cool things happened that you don't even realize. Okay, what do I mean? Well, see this? This isn't part of C Sharp. I'm going to teach you tomorrow how you can go out to Visual Basic, grab something from there, and put it, bring it into your C Sharp program. This is Visual Basic code. All right, and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not difficult. The hardest thing was positioning it on the screen. I still should move it over a little more. But by default, it goes up here which looked really bad. So I played with it, moved it around a little bit. But I'll show you how to do that tomorrow. Okay? But that's using the search function as an example. Okay, so we'll look at that in more depth and breadth of coverage tomorrow. Why that's stuck there, but now it is. Okay. That's pretty nifty. Let's just jump back into here. All right. As it says, the binary search method only works if your array is in ascending order. Binary search is what is called a having type of search. Now, having, H-A-L-V-I-N-G. Look on the screen if you want. I'm going to write seven numbers. I'm going to put in order. 1, 26, 37, 54, 71, and 93. Now, you're all bright. If I asked you, is 87 in here, you'd say no, correct? But the way you do this is you say 87. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You cut it in half. And you say, okay, and you can go either way. Typically, you'll have one more number. So let's put one more number in here, 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you cut it in half and you say, okay, there's the number. Okay? Is that it? No. Is, it, is the number greater than or less than that number? Well, you know it's greater than it, right? So 
these four numbers can't be the number. So now you only have to check three. So you cut it in half again. And you say, okay, is that the number? No. Is the number greater than or less than that number? It's less than. So it's either that number or it's not there. Does that make sense? That's a having sort. And if you still don't get it, and I think you all did, but I, I, and you, I don't know if you guys have ever heard me say this one or not, but I probably have. Sorry. But um, <clears throat> I remember one summer, this was many years ago, back when Bob Barker still hosted The Price is Right, and I'm watching this guy, and he's got 60 seconds to guess the price of a refrigerator, and he'll win it. Okay. And the guy goes, 700. And he goes, higher. And he goes, 701. And I'm thinking, you ain't going to win. It was like 900 bucks. So you say 700, higher, 1,000, lower. You just keep trying to take the number that you've got and cutting it down every time. One of the, I think you guys, did you guys do the guessing game last, last year or not? Okay. But I, I've done this before. You make a simple kid's guessing game. All right? And uh, um, you generate a, a random number between 1 and 100. Okay? So you guess 50. All right? Let's just say the number is 87. So I guess 50. Say higher. So now 50 of them are already gone, right? So I say half of what's left, 75. Higher. Now in two guesses, I've eliminated 75 out of 100 possibilities. Okay? Let's just say it wasn't 87. Let's say it's 88 because 87 would be the next number. You go higher. Now in three guesses, 87% of the numbers that are possible have been removed. All right? And again, I may have told you this. I don't think you guys heard this, but I, when we were little, when they were little kids, and we'd take long trips with my with my my family, because our my, the two families lived about 300 miles apart from each other, we'd play that game, but we'd use like a million. And I could guess the number typically in about 10 guesses. My kids never could figure out how I could do that. But when they were that little, 1,057 higher, 1,058, you know. We could play for a long time like that, all right? So if the array is not in ascending order, you must sort it first. That's all they're saying. And you know how to do that, okay? Now, when you copy arrays, if you look up on the screen, please, every language is different, okay? What do I mean? In this language, notice I can do this. And even if there's a million elements, I copy them all from here to here. That's how fast it happens. In other languages, you have to put them in a loop and copy it one at a time. See what I'm saying? It depends upon the language. I'm not sure how, how new this is, but I think the array copy is fairly new. Okay. Now, this is a word you have not seen before two words. An array is a reference type. Remember we did those ref parameters and that out thing? We looked at that the other day. When you pass an array, so let's say I've got an array with a million numbers in it, okay? If I pass an array, I don't pass all million numbers. I pass the address of where the beginning of that array is. Since it is a reference type, as the author just mentioned, since it is a reference type, what that means so we're is going to start, start on, on chapter, chapter eight right, right now, now, page two fifty. Again, Again, I already said seven. that. All right, but since it is a reference type, all you pass is the address to the beginning of it. Passes like that. If you were to pass a million things, it's going to take more time. The system has to reconcile where everything is. All right, and if you you still don't get it, imagine. You know, that, that you were going to a garage sale. It was a neighborhood sale. And let's pretend the best way to go would be to find the address of the first one with the sale and just keep going. Wouldn't that be faster than going from house to house? Do you have a garage sale? Do you have a garage sale? Do you have a garage sale? My wife will love this if she ever hears this because she's a garage sale. To know that I actually work garage sales into a lecture. She liked that. All right. When you copy an array... The target array must be the same type. So I can't, I can't copy a Boolean array into a brand new integer array. That makes sense? 
and it says it must be large enough to receive it. So I can copy an array with 50 things into an array with 100 things, and it'll copy the first 50 in, and if they're numbers, the next 50 will just be set to zero. Usually when you copy, you copy of something from one size to another thing of the same size. You don't have to do that, but that usually seems how it works. All right, maybe not everybody agrees with that. How to code methods that work with arrays. All right, now notice one thing, okay? And you're, you're gonna see this soon, if not you know tomorrow, then soon. But look, here we passed an array in. See this? When you pass it in an array, you've got to say bracket, bracket. Because if you don't, the system thinks it's not an array. It's just a single, elementary, simple value. All right? So you can return an array. Remember we said you can only return zero or one thing? That one thing can be an array. All right? Okay, this is called the null conditional operator. As it says, it makes it easy to test for null values. All right, well, let's look. Right. So what you're saying here is if something is null, it hasn't been given a value. If I come in, I'm not talking about an array, but if I come in and I say int space age semicolon the value of age is null it's unknown i haven't given it a value it's not zero it's unknown you can set an array to null you can do that which means that all of its values are unknown you don't want to go and work on an array with null values because if you try to do anything with it you're going to get errors and exceptions so you can check to see if it's null first if you want to all right Okay, now we're jumping into collections then. Now notice it says, like an array, a collection can hold one or more elements. Unlike an array, a collection doesn't have a fixed size. That again means late binded, like I told you before, at runtime, and you can add things and remove things from it. All right, now where, where I used to teach they were having, they had some issues. We typically had more people. My, my average class size in there was 15, so it's bigger than the class size yet. Okay, but according to the person, right when I quit there, the person who took over as president, he believed that anybody should be able to add a class at any time, up until like week nine of an 18 week semester. So you could add halfway into it. I thought that was ridiculous and feel like I was in because you missed nine weeks of stuff. You'd have to, even if you watched all the videos, you still missed nine weeks of stuff. But that was his policy. Okay. So the point is the class size could grow or shrink as the semester went on for nine weeks. That's what he, they're talking about here. All right. It says. Collections are usually more appropriate and can usually manage system resources better than arrays when you need, when the number that you have may vary. Okay? So some of the collection classes are shown here. This is, this is a little hard to understand, but please remember, what we are going to do in future classes is we are going to talk about object-oriented programming. And you will use this stuff in much more depth and breadth of coverage. So you look at this now and you're like, what the heck? List? T? All that is, is it's, it's the equivalent of an array list. So it's an array that can get bigger and smaller. So you can add things to it, remove things from it as the program's run. That's it. You can set it up so it's immediately sorted. Okay. You can have a queue. People look, you know, I've, I've said that given this kind of lecture before, I don't know what that is. Yes, you do. If it's the first day of, the, of, of a semester and you're brand new students, and I tell you that you all need a badge, what do you do? You go over by the security guy and you wait outside the door, correct? And if there's 10 of you, the first one in will be the first one served, right? That's a queue. 
First in, first out. Did you ever go to a cafeteria where the cafeteria worker puts in a bunch of trays and pushes them down? All right, there, the last one that's there is the one you grab, right? That's a stack. So a queue is first in, first out. FIFO, a stack is last in, first out. LIFO. Okay? And they are used a lot in what are called, you know, more advanced data structures. Okay? All right. Figure 814, it says here, shows the difference between typed collections and untyped collection. It says the first example shows how to use an array list to create an untyped collection. So let's look at it. Okay. Well, now, wait a minute. This, you told us you can't do this. Look what we're doing. Array list numbers equal new array list. You te technically can put this in, number, number, string. You don't get an error until you run it. See this? It'll compile, but when you try to run it, it says, oh, apple, apple, that's an orange. Can't use it. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. If you know it's going to break anyway, I'd never want to use it. This will involve us using, no pun intended, more using statements. See that? Now, if you do it like this and say array list, notice it compiles, but it, it gives you an error at runtime. If instead of saying array list, you say list and you tell it the type, this is a list holding integers, now it blows up when it comes right there. So that's considered a safer way of doing it. And that's a typed collection because you're telling it the type. An array list doesn't have a type. A list does have a type. We're going to go through all this stuff later on in the semester. Okay. And I love that. The author gives you like one page and an example. Now that you understand the difference, wow. Yeah. It says you're ready to learn how to use the list class and how to work with a list. There's a lot of different ways that this stuff can be used. The key thing is you want to add something to a list. You want to remove something from a list, which you can't do with an array. We're not talking about the value. So again, if I had an array of 10 employees and I would say that I can't have more than 10 employees. Does that make sense? And if one quits, they're still in the, they're still in the array. But if I have a list or an array list of 10 employees, it can grow and shrink over time. And that's what the author is mentioning right here. These are some of the different properties and methods you can use. You know, don't worry about them because we are going to hit on them later on in the semester. So it says a list is a collection that automatically adjusts its capacity or its size. And again, they give you a bunch of examples. I don't want to confuse you. All right. I mean, if, if you were to right now where, you know, arrays sort of make sense to me and those single dimension things we did sort of make sense. That's good. That's where you should be. All right. But when Muroc writes their book, they're not only written for people who don't know how to program, they're also written for programmers that want to learn more. So then they go into a sorted list, and with a sorted list, this is called some languages call this like Python calls this a dictionary. It's keys and values. For instance, a, a real popular one to use, not what they're showing here. MO would be the key, Missouri would be the value. IL would be the key. Illinois would be the value, that kind of thing. You can set it up any way you want. Here it's it's got names. Those are the keys. So Finkel P, there's the value. Adams A, there's the value. It just depends on what you're doing. And as it says then, the items in a sorted list consist of key value pairs. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, then they talk about the Q class and the stack class as well. I'm not going to get into those. I mean, there's some really, really good stuff there, all right? But it's it, it's it's up there. 
You know what I'm saying? I took a class once in advanced data structures. I'm not going to even lie to you. After about three weeks, I dropped. It was over my head. Now, I, could I take it now? Yes. Would I get an A? I have absolutely no idea. But it was so hard because everything he would do is he put stuff on the board. Now, you can't really visualize this. Then it was hard for me because I couldn't visualize it. So he'd start writing code, and it's like, yeah, but what does that look like? Well, you can't visualize it. Well, then I'm not going to use it. You know, like I said, that was me. All right? So what I am going to do between now and the end of class is I am going to get the um, next test, the next written test for Chapter 8, and the next homework for Chapter 8. All of these homeworks for 6, 7, and 8 will not be due till a week from Friday. Regardless of what we said for those dates, they'll all be due on the 14th. There's your Valentine's Day gift. All right. So they'll all be due then. And that's because 6, 7, and 8 all bleed into one another. All right. Any questions? All right. That's all that I have then.